Hey folks, so uh, we're going to talk about Ampere's law, and we've been discussing uh, the magnetic field made by uh, wires. We talked about the direction of it, and um, we did talk about briefly about the Biot-Savart law. Um, we may or may not have done examples with that because that's that's a tough one to use. Um, but now we're going to use Ampere's law, and Ampere's law is a lot easier to use. Okay, so um, I will, I'm going to kind of use Ampere's law and do an example at the same time. So imagine that we have a wire, and the wire, I'm going to make it nice and like a magnified version of it so we can see it. So there's our wire, and let's say we're carrying current that way. Okay, so that's our current. So the magnetic field, if, you know, in the previous discussions, we talked about the right-hand rule. The magnetic field would go like this, and it would circle that way around the wire, right? So I'll draw a few representative circles for the magnetic field. There you go. So that is our magnetic field, okay? So um, how do we calculate the strength of the magnetic field? And I, I've mentioned that the field is stronger near the wire, and, and as you get farther away, the field gets weaker. So how do you calculate that? Well, what Ampere figured out is the following. If you, um, if you imagine taking a path, okay, around one of these loops that I've just drawn. I'm going to call that DS right there. It's a little chunk of that path. So Ampere figured out that if I integrate, if I, if I count up the product of B dot DS, so I'm multiplying B times. Now, a couple notes about that before I do the right side of this equation. Um, so the closed loop here, that means that we're, like I just said, we're doing a closed loop. We're doing a path. So we're going to take a path. We're going to go around this loop and we're going to do one complete loop and end up where we started that's what that this what this loop here in the integral means okay and we're doing b dot ds so we're, we're we're taking a path that we want to take a path that's parallel to that field at all points okay this equals mu naught that's a, a magnetic constant and I'll, I'll write that down in a minute times the current that passes inside of the area bounded by that loop. Okay, so imagine there's, there's current poking through that green area I just drew. Um, that's your, whatever current's going through that area, that's your I in, okay? Now, uh, when you wanna do, um, when you wanna use Ampere's law, you wanna pick um, a path, okay, an Amperian loop, I'll, or I'll, I'll call it an Amperian path. Uh, that has the following two properties. You would like, preferably, ds to be parallel to the magnetic field at all points. Okay, so in this case, the magnetic field goes in a circle, so we're going to draw. We're going to make our path a circle. Okay, and uh, the other one is you want b to be the same strength everywhere along that path. So if this circle is centered on that wire then the magnetic field strength will be the same everywhere along that circle. So we want those two properties for our Amperian path, okay? Um, now, it turns out that, that Ampere's law is very easy to use, okay? Uh, now, oh, real quick, mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th, and that's tesla meters per amp, okay? And... Um, Let's see, what else did I want to tell you before we do that? Uh, oh, let me do a top view of this just so you can see it. So imagine I'm looking down on this wire. So now here's the wire, and you're, the current is poking out of the page at us. Now our magnetic field, would you would see the full circle like this, okay? So that's a top view um, of this. So our Amperian loop literally is that circle, and it's going to have a radius r, Okay. Okay, so um, if you use Ampere's law correctly, you typically don't have to actually integrate. So uh, if we, we're going to take B, uh, now what's the integral of ds around the, that full path? Well, it's just the, the length of the path, which is the di or circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. Okay, so that, that's your integral of B dot ds if you pick the, a good Amperian loop. It's going to equal mu naught times I in. Now, how much of the current in the wire passes through this loop? Well, 
all of it. So it's just I, okay? Um, and then you got your answer. B equals mu naught I over two pi R, okay? Um, so there's your magnetic field if you're outside the wire. Very simple, two lines of work, right? So, and a lot of the time, Ampere's law is going to be just like that. It's going to be very easy to use, okay? Now, um, what if, let's assume that this current were distributed throughout the wire. So, you know, every part of the wire has some current running through it, okay? And what if we started digging into the wire? What would the magnetic field look like inside the wire, okay? So if I kind of imagine, here's the wire again. And we're going to look at a point like here. Okay, so our Amperian loop is going to look like that. And now, you know, our current goes like this. Well, not all that current is going to pass through Amperian loop. Okay, so I'm going to still use Ampere's law, integral B dot dS equals mu naught I in. Okay, the left-hand side is going to be exactly the same as before, B times 2 pi radius of that circle I just drew. but the, the difference becomes, what's I in? Okay, what is I in? Okay, well, if you think about it, the total current going through here, we'll call that I. Well, how much do we capture in this little loop here? Well, it's gonna, gonna be proportional to the area of the loop. So I in over the total current is gonna be the area in divided by the total area, which is gonna be pi little r squared over pi times whatever the wire's radius is squared. So I, I probably should write that down. We'll make this the radius of the wire. That's a constant, okay? And of course, the pi's drop out here. So you get I in is equal to the total current times the ratio of the radii squared in this case. And so this is the I in we put over here. So you got I times the radius that we're at squared divided by the radius of the wire squared, okay? And then you can solve here. Uh, B equals one of these little r's drops out and you get mu naught I times r over two pi big R squared. So that's the magnetic field if you are digging into the wire. And if you were to graph this, if you were to graph B versus radius, uh, radius of the wire itself is a point of interest. Uh, when you're outside the wire, it's an inverse. That's our first equation we got. That's that mu naught I over two pi R. So mu naught I over two pi little r. When you're inside, it's a linear function. So it looks like that. Uh, and you get uh, this equation here. I'll, I won't rewrite it. Um, notice the magnetic field at the dead center of the wire would be zero. So if I were standing, you know, right in the dead center of the wire, the field would be zero. Um, also note that this formula and this formula return the same result when little r is big R, when we're at the surface of the wire. That's your max magnetic field right there, and that would be mu naught i over 2 pi radius of the wire. Okay, both these functions give that result when you plug in big R for little r. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing I'll, I'll mention on here. Uh, what if you have a wire that's hollowed out? Okay, so like let's say a top view, let's say the wire looks like this. So you got that and that, and it's hollow. So like here's the actual wire. And I ask you to find, let's say there's a total current I passing through this, and I ask you to find the magnetic field right there. Okay, now assuming the current comes out of the page at us, so let's say that's your current. Okay, so that's your I coming out of the page at us. Okay, the magnetic field would go counterclockwise. So your magnetic field would go like this. Okay, so if you did Ampere's law for this situation, you get, you know, integral B dot dS equals mu naught I in. Okay, the left side of this is still B times 2 pi R. Okay, the right side is still mu naught. Now, what's I in? Okay. So in this case, we're capturing the current that's in this part of the wire. So your I in would still be the total current times the area in over the total area. But now you have to be careful with that. So you got mu naught I. The area in would be pi little r squared minus, now I got to give you these dimensions. Uh, let's say the inner radius of this thing is A, and let's say the outer radius is B. 
So it'd be pi um, r squared minus pi uh, a squared. That would be the, the area you captured. Divided by the total area would be pi b squared minus pi a squared. Um, the only thing you can cancel there is the pi. Everything, nothing else you can cancel. So then you would solve for you would solve for b and you'd get an equation. Um, so be careful on when we say i in how much char how much current did you actually actually passes through um, our our area that we're looking at. Okay. All right. So um, I hope uh, that that uh, introduction of Ampere's law and that example was helpful. And uh, thank you very much.